Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC 17 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. We're just going to jump back into things, of course, still using the newer team that we debuted for the last three episodes, I believe it's been now. So, hope you guys have been enjoying the games with the new team. It's definitely a little bit different from the other teams we've been using. Kind of a throwback to the hyper-offensive team we were using earlier. But yeah, I'd really love to at least climb to the 1700s with this team. So, hopefully we'll be able to pull that off and then I'll switch to a new team. Going to find a Japanese opponent right away to kick off this episode. As always, if you guys enjoy Road Rank, please share your support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And... This first team is really intriguing because, like, the top half, really Oranguru and the Drampa scream Trick Room. And then everything else screams, like, pretty hyper-offensive because there's the Nao Ego, the Kartana, the Tapu Lele, and the Arcanine. So, that's all really interesting. Um, one thing to keep in mind is Snorlax. It's, like, typically my answer against Trick Room, so I'm probably going to bring it here. But it does suffer a little bit because of Kartana's ability to just Sacred Sword through Curses, which can be a little bit frustrating. It does get burned by Arcanine, although I do have the uh, facade for that. So, let's see what I want to lead with here. Part of me wants to go with Garchomp, just for the Scarf Factor. Uh, especially because that can kind of dunk on my opponent's now ego. So I feel like I always go Coco Chomp, but I still think that might be a decent option here. Yeah, because I think my opponent's now ego is going to be coming out here. Um, I also could go with... Nah. I'm going to bring Snorlax in the back. The last one's between Arcanine and Gyarados. I'm a little bit more leaning towards Gyarados, just so if my opponent does lead to Ego, I can Earthquake turn 1 immediately and switch into Gyarados. The only reason really to bring Arcanine is because it has a slightly better matchup against Kartana, but I think I can bring Gyarados here and afford to do so. So, we're going to get into the first game of today's episode. Yeah, that team is definitely really interesting, because I haven't really seen a Rangaroo Drampa or really, a Rangaroo in general is not a Pokemon that I've seen too much of, although I think it is kind of underused right now. Um, but Drampa, you know, we used it on Gavin Michaels' team earlier on Road to Ranked, and it's a really strong Trick Room option. Just kind of cool to see the Trick Room hybrid here. But we see Lele and Arcanine as a lead here from my opponent. Okay. So, uh, immediately we'll be able to see what item the Lele has, because if Psychic Terrain goes up first, then it's going to be Scarfed. But it looks like it's not Scarfed, as I do get up the Electric Terrain. Um, okay, so Arcanine's faster than Lele, too, so that's probably max speed offensive Arcanine, which is interesting. I really want to just Thunderbolt and Poison Jab into Lele turn 1. Is there any I can switch into that? Not really. Of course, it could mean Arcanine going for, like, a Flare Blitz onto Coco. Mm, but I can't really protect with either of these Pokemon. So yeah, I might commit a little bit hard here. Uh, could also discharge Poison Jab. I'm not sure if that would knock out Lele through Intimidate. So I'm going to double up onto Lele because I want Garchomp to come back in and start Earthquaking. And I have an Arcanine switches out. That's perfect. So even if Lele doesn't protect her, I'll take this turn. Or even if it does protect. But it doesn't protect. Okay, perfect. So I think Poison Jab plus Thunderbolt should knock this out. I sure hope so. This is Specs Thunderbolt, but I don't have the Electric Terrain up. Okay, good. And I don't think this charge would have picked up that knockout uh, without an Electric Terrain. So, catch my opponent off guard with that Choice Scarf. Even if it weren't Scarfed, I mean, I'd still outspeed Lele. So, that was the turn one I wanted. Arcanine's going to come back in too, which is pretty nice. Because now I can swap Garchomp out into Gyarados uh, to get the Intimidate off. And with my last one being Snorlax, the priority is definitely to knock out the Kartana right now. So, instead of Thunderbolting into Arcanine, I do have Hidden Power, but unfortunately I'm Spec, so I'm locked into Thunderbolt. I'm just going to Thunderbolt Cortana here and withdraw out into Gyarados. This not only intimidates my opponent's Pokemon, but also... <laughs> we actually just get a forfeit immediately. Okay, uh, I'll take those. Yeah, I don't think you should ever forfeit unless you're 100% sure a game is lost and you want to conserve information. Like, that's the only reason to really forfeit ever against an opponent in Pokemon, or if you're running short on time, I guess on battle spot, but, you know, every, like, comebacks, we've seen so many good comebacks, especially in this format, too, like, it's really possible to always pull a comeback in VGC, and sure, my opponent was down, but it was far from over there, 
And especially when you don't know what Pokemon your opponent has in the back, you, like you should really never give up. But yeah, we end up with the quickest game one we've ever had on Road to Rank, pretty much, uh, ending in one turn. So we're just gonna try to find the next opponent. But yeah, I mean that first turn played out perfectly. Could have gone very poorly if my opponent you know, stayed in with Arcanine and switched out the Lele. But I made a kind of a hard read, and it worked out uh, fortunately. But our next opponent of the day, Darren, is going to be running a really kind of offensive team as well. And I'm really scared actually because of the Gold Duck. Uh, I don't think my rain matchup is very good, honestly. And I ran into rain on stream, and we I was able to outplay it, but it's still really tricky. So Darren here has a team of Arcanine and Kurtana, so similar from the last game, but has also got a uh, three water types in Politoed, the Golduck, and the Gastrodon, and then Top of Coco to round it off. So obviously kind of a speedy offensive team here, a very reliant on probably getting up the rain immediately with Politoed and the Golduck. Hmm... So, yeah, that's a really tricky combination immediately, and I, it's going to need some finessing to get around, um, because I don't have any water resists other than Gyarados, nor do I have a weather user, and honestly, that was kind of the weakness, one of the weaknesses when I constructed this team, I was like, I didn't really think too much of Rain still being around, even though I was using that earlier. Um, okay, expecting Politoed Gold Duck, I'm going to lead Gyarados here to maybe just get some pressure off immediately. Uh, Garchomp's actually not too bad in the back. I kind of like Gyarados Snorlax here, just because you can't knock me out, I could potentially recycle. I'm going to want Coco in the back, and I think Garchomp is the last one. Not too much reason to bring Arcanine against so many water types, it really doesn't do too much at all. And now you go, not exactly the best Pokemon here either. So I'm going to lock in. I feel like I kind of had to go with these four Pokemon, but the matchup I think is definitely in my opponent's favor if he plays this correctly. So I'm definitely going to have to come up with something here to try to win. Uh, because... Yeah, Golduck is just a really big offensive threat because of its ability to Z-move me. I'm, what I'm hoping with this lead is he does lead Politoed Golduck, and I kind of bait the uh, Vortex into the Snorlax, and I can just recycle to get my berry up immediately, effectively wasting a Z-move. And we do see Politoed Golduck, okay. I guess the other concern, though, is my opponent has uh, Gashon on the back. It's not like my Gyarados can really do much. The thing is, Gyar Gyarados actually hits really hard if we can get, like, a Dragon Dance off here. Okay. So what do I want to do turn 1? I wonder if Waterfall plus Facade knocks out Golduck. Because Gyarados definitely- Snorlax will hang on from the Z-move. He can probably even survive a double target from Golduck and Politoed. I think I'm actually going to Dragon Dance here though. And... I'm actually going to Dragon Dance Recycle. Because you can't Encore a Z-move. And he does just Z-move here. So, I'm I, like, the one fear of going for Dragon Dance if he, is if he does have the Z-move here with Golduck. But, uh, or if he has Encore, excuse me, with Golduck. But hopefully, I'm hoping here he burns into a, a Snorlax. Because this shouldn't knock me out. It'll proc my berry. I think he'll double up onto that slot with the Politoed as well. And then I could get all my recovery back. He does start you down Snorlax. So, he should be able to survive this. Snorlax is really bulky. I sure hope it can take this. Excellent. So I hang out with just a sliver of HP, but I heal back a ton with my Appa Berry. He does go for a Scald as well. Oh, that's Scarf Toad, I think. Please burn me, I have Facade. Ah, oh, no, no burn. But that's exactly how I wanted this turn to play out. He commits very hardly into the Snorlax, doesn't really do too much, and I recycle. So I'm going to heal back basically everything. So, like I said, this matchup's tricky and needs some finessing, but uh, that turn one at least played out the way I wanted it to. Now Snorlax will be able to heal pretty much all the way back up to full HP, and I wasted my opponent's uh, Golduck's move. Um, and I'm pretty sure that Politoed is Scarfed as well, so tons of good information to confirm there. So with that, I could Dragon Dance again. I think I'm going to water Z move here into Golduck. That might just knock it out. Even if not, that's fine. And I'm actually going to just go for another Recycle. Because my opponent doesn't have great tools to deal with Snorlax. He might double up into it. I don't think uh, even a Hydro Pump plus a Scald knocks me out. He just stays in with both. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have Hydro Pump. Looks like he's just going for Scald. And maybe he doesn't want to risk a miss. Yeah, that's definitely Scarf Toad. <laughs> Uh, I'd really want to burn because of uh, the increase of damage to Facade. Uh, none of it coming out here, but Snorlax is such a defensive tank. It's literally here just to wall up my opponent's attacks and it's baiting everything out. Uh, that's why I love having a great means of recovery like Recycle, because you can just take the berry and continuously heal back. So I'm going to get this Hydro Vortex off against the Golduck. It's not going to... Actually, I think it might knock it out with the Rain M plus one. But let's see. <laughs> Very nice. And I get the recycle with Golduck. Oh, I mean with the Snorlax. Oh, Snorlax, I love you, man. 
Snorlax is not going down. A burn would have been appreciated because the re like the chip damage actually isn't that great since they nerfed it from an 8 to a 16th, and then I could start facading for damage, but... Given that Politoed is basically confirmed to have a Choice Scarf, that means it's not really doing very much right now, other than maybe fishing for a burn onto Golduck. Or onto Gyarados, sorry. I am really mixing up all my water types, but I'm guessing there's... Okay, yeah, Cortana comes in, so that's also good to see. Um, but this is still far from over. Because Cortana is a pretty big threat, honestly. I'm at plus one, so I don't really want to switch out right now. You could Sacred Sword me. Mm. I think the goal really should be to whittle down Cortana here, so I'm going to... I think Waterfall does more in the rain here. I'm correct. With Stab as well. And Ice Fang could miss too, so I don't want that to miss. So I'm gonna... Waterfall and... I think this summer run I'm just gonna Facade Politoed. I'm fine if Snorlax goes down now, because I could get a free switch and into something, but Politoed actually switches out, okay. Oh, and a Gastrodon, so there was a Gastrodon in the back. Interesting. Hmm. That's the one reason not to waterfall, so I should have considered that. But, okay. Yeah, he's gonna Sacred Sword me. That doesn't knock me out, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Snorlax is really a tank here. I'm uh, gonna get this facade off. Not gonna do too... Eh, does more than I would have anticipated, I guess, since... Yeah, not burned or anything. Okay. That's fine. I uh, really want to know Cortana's item. I've got Coco in the back, though, which is good, which is very good. I'm going to Ice Fang Cortana here, and I think I'm fine sacking Snorlax here. Yeah. I'll go for a high horsepower in case my opponent lets me get that off, but uh, I think I'll probably lose Snorlax here. Yep, so I get the Ice Fang off. This should do around like 40%. Yep, right around the money. He actually Leaf Blades, probably into Gyarados, yeah. Hopefully no crit. Okay. Okay, Ashram recovers, actually. So I actually do manage to hang on here with Snorlax. The other funny thing is, if I knock out the Cortana and Politoed's come back, come back, comes back in. Wow, can't use my words there. Uh, then he's forced to use... Uh, he can't use water type attacks, otherwise... Oh, well, I guess he could probably have Surf. He probably does have Surf, actually. Does Rain end this turn? Yeah, it does. So my opponent timed that kind of nicely. But now Cortana's in Ice Fang KO at range. So I can just Ice Fang and Recycle. Yeah. Okay, I don't miss, which is good. I think this knocks it out. Excellent. So that's nice. Uh, let's see if Snorlax survives this turn. He's just going to go for a Scald, targeting Snorlax. I'll take that knockout. That's fine. Hmm. But because my opponent timed the rain properly, um, this is actually still really tricky. Like, I haven't won this by any means, and that's because my tools against uh, Gashon just aren't very good. So I'm inclined to bring in Coco here. The question is whether he has Hydro Pump or not. Because if he doesn't have a way to... Oh wait, no, he can't use, uh, he can't use Hydro Pump because he'll get redirected, so he would have to Surf. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. If Polito comes back in while Gashon's out... Uh, he's most definitely going for a Surf here. I shouldn't get knocked out by a Surf and a Thunderbolt to knock out the Politoed. Yeah, so definitely Scarf there, obviously. So unless he crits me, or unless Surf somehow knocks me out, but I don't think it should. However, then it's Gyarados and Garchomp against Gastrodon. And I think I should be able to win that, but I'm not sure. So even though I had such a good start, like this is still far from over. Yep, there's the Surf. Okay, don't crit me, please. I don't think this should knock me out. Because he's Scarfed. If this knocks me out, I'm... The game's just over then, though. Okay. Good. So, Tebow here will knock out the Politoed in one hit with Choice Specs. Getting rid of Scarf Toad. Really wasn't anticipating Scarf Toad there. Uh, he's gonna Scald. Yep, it's correctly into a Coco slot. If Coco survived there, then I would have felt like really good about my chances. But I mean, I'm still in an okay position. It's just like Gastron has shown it can recover, which is not good. Especially if it has Ice Beam.
Oh boy. Do I Dragon Dance again here, or do I just Ice Fang? Ice Fang could flinch here as well. Hmm. I think having a chance to flinch here could actually be pretty huge, because if I get a single one off, then that's very advantageous. I'm going to Dragon Claw here, because Earthquake still takes the spread damage. Oh, Gashinal! Ah! <laughs> he actually had Protect, so I actually could have Dragon Dance there. I guess that's the one thing I didn't consider. So we've seen Protect, Recover, and Scald. So it makes me really wonder what that last attack is. I don't know why you would Protect there, though. You also burn out a Rain Turn, which could be crucial against me. But yeah, I really wish I Dragon Dance there. I'm gonna Dragon Claw. Let's see how much this does. Okay, I'll take that damage output. I don't miss Ice Fang either, which is nice. Oh! Okay, so he flinched there, but he didn't have a Citrus Berry. He only has Leftovers. So with that, I can't feel too bad about what happened there. Um, I mean, so that's why I was going for Ice Fang too, because I know I had the chance to freeze or flinch, and it's if I if I get either of those in the game should most definitely be over in my favor. Although I could still miss Ice Fang, so it's not over yet. Um, I could Dragon Dance here, but I don't see much of a reason to. Even if he protects, I just go for the same attack again. So a little bit fortunate of a flinch there, but it, it really would have depended on whether Gashadon had Ice Beam or not, whether it could have knocked out my Garchomp as I crit there, just that insult to injury. So I feel a little bit bad there, but I don't know. I feel like I played that correctly, other than not Dragon Dancing on the Protect turn, but it... I don't know, if you're my opponent, I don't see much of a reason to protect with Gastrodon because you risk your opponent dragon dancing. You don't really scout out any more additional information. So I could have capitalized off maybe hoping my opponent would misplay, but I think Dragon Claw plus Ice Fang was the proper play. I mean, it did around 70% there. I don't think Scald would knock out Gyarados, and I could stall out the rain as well through protecting. So if he didn't have Ice Beam, then I think that game definitely was over at that point. Even if I had Ice Beam, if it looked pretty bulky. So if, it, for example, I didn't have any special attack investment, Garchomp might have been able to hang on. Um, and if I were able to hang on, then that would definitely be game as well. We're going to find Patrick from Netherlands with a rating of 1554 for our next opponent of the day. Patrick running also more rain. Oh, we just managed to beat rain, but I can't want to do it again. Uh, Pelipper, Golduck, Arcanine, Tabu Bulu, Sea King, and Magnazone. I hope Sea King comes out and I hope I lose to it. <laughs> Um, okay, Sea King does have Lightning Rod, so I have to watch out for that. I think I'm going to go with the same strategy I went last time, because that worked out pretty well. This time, Gyarados can also just use its Water-type attacks without worrying as much. So, once again, it's going to be Snorlax Gyarados. Uh, sea King is actually a very big problem. I <laughs> don't have a Grass-type attack to hit it, so it actually would maybe come down to... Let's see, I'm still going to go Garchomp, I think. And I might bring now you go over Coco, as odd as that seems. Because the thing is, my Coco's not going to be able to knock out Golduck anyway. And now you go threatens Bulu, Sea King. I mean, Bulu and Arcanine directly. Power Gem brings Pelipper down to its sash. So yeah, I'm actually going to bring now you go, which is weird against Rain, but it makes some sense here. Arcanine, really not the best here. And Coco, would Sea King probably having Lightning Rod? I'm not going to bring it either. So I'm really curious if Sea King does come out because I think it actually makes a lot of sense for my opponent. As a result, because I did see Sea King team preview, I didn't bring any electric types. Or, uh, I mean, it's only Coco, really. But, uh, of course, the Arcanine is Blower Charge as well. So we'll see if the same strategy can work from the last game because that was pretty nice. And there's Pelipper Golduck, so I'm liking where this is starting with. The only issue here is... That uh, Pelipper could set up Tailwind. But I think I'm going to go for my same strategy here of recycling. And the, the only other fear is that Pelipper here could just go for a Hurricane onto Gyarados. And that actually does a substantial amount of damage. So it's not as simple as the last time around. But we saw that that Dragon Dance does just kind of nuke Golduck. He also could double up onto Gyarados. Which could be bad. So maybe I don't want to recycle this time, and I want to just go for damage. Got Garchomp, now you go in the back. Mm, I'm going to Dragon Dance here, and... I'm going to Facade to break Pelipper's Sash. Because if he doubles up into it, like, I don't even think Z-Move plus two attacks from Pelipper could knock... Actually, it might. Yeah, it probably does. Eh, we'll see. But here's the Z-move again. Okay, so playing out kind of similarly to the last game. 
Kind of wish I recycled now. Um, yeah. But we'll see if this even targets down Snorlax. It could be targeting down Palo But I would think if you're my opponent, you've got to be a little bit worried about Snorlax right now. So here's Hydro Vortex coming out, targeting all Snorlax. Okay, great. So I'll be able to take this. So close every time, but... <laughs> Yeah, actually, I don't think I can take two Scalds, but I do get the Dragon Dance up. I'm faster than Pelipper. And what does Pelipper go for? Is it a Tailwind? Is it a Hurricane? It is a Hurricane into Gyarados. Okay, I was kind of worried about that, but it does oh, it does exactly like 50%. Yeah, that's the issue with running Facade as well. I'm doing less damage from there. Well, I really don't know the role there. Nonetheless, I'm going to go for the Z-move here. Onto Golduck. And I'm going to recycle here, yeah. Because... Palabra, I think, will want to... Uh, he goes for Ice Beam. This shouldn't knock me out. Yeah. No, good. No freeze. Okay. So, this should knock out Golduck. I hope so. Maybe the last one was just really frail. But the thing is, most Golducks invest very highly in special attack and speed anyway. You have very little, like... And they'll have a little bit of HP and defense investment, but this is one of the strongest Z-moves in the game from one of the strongest Pokemon in the game, and it's boosted by rain, and I'm at plus one. So if this knocks out and Golduck or Pelipper didn't target down that slot, which is likely, as I do eliminate I can't believe it, I'm using literally using Gyarados to beat rain, but it's working. <laughs> Any Hurricanes into Snorlax, perfect. No confusion, please. <laughs> Okay, fortunate, fortunate, fortunate. There's the Iapa, Iapa Berry. Gonna heal back all the way up. And things are looking pretty good right now, especially with no Tailwind from my pressure from my opponent. I eliminated Golduck, which is the biggest threat to my Nile Ego and my Garchomp. So I'm feeling a little... I'm definitely feeling comfortable with my position, but similarly to the last game, it's definitely not over by any means. Uh, but we see Magnezone come in. That's pretty promising to see as well, I think. Especially with Chomp and Nile Ego in the back. I think here I'm actually just gonna go for a... Waterfall into Pelipper. That could knock it out in the rain, honestly, and high horsepower. I'd like to eliminate Magnezone because Magnezone's still a really big threat to Nile Ego. He could just protect Tailwind here. But the thing is, Pelipper Magnezone isn't doing too much damage to Snorlax. Uh, Snorlax really being the MVP kind of so far this episode, uh, both this game and the last game. So being able to bait all these water type attacks away is so huge. And yeah, I think my opponents are just surprised by Gyarados's damage output. So here's the Waterfall. Unfortunately, it doesn't knock out Pelipper. Pelipper is just going to launch a Hurricane here into the Gyarados slot. So, uh, still no Tailwind up, which is really good. Because it means Nihilgill and Garchomp should be able to clean this up. Because there's no opportunity for my opponent to Tailwind anymore. Unless I miss High Horsepower here. He is going to go for a Thunderbolt, getting a critical hit. High Horsepower, however, fortunately does connect. Edge should knock out the Magazone. Perfect. Four times super effective, of course. Magazone will be going down here. So with that, it's uh, definitely a good opportunity to switch in now. Ego right now. Now Ego covers pretty much everything in the back I'm worried about. And that's why I brought it in this game. Uh, especially if it's Bulu or Arcanine coming in here. And it's actually going to be CK. Okay, that's like the one Pokemon that could give me some trouble. But... Quite frankly, I think Snorlax wins... Like, Rain's expiring soon too, so... I'm just going to Power Gem into Pelipper. Pelipper's probably going to protect here, and I'll lose now Ego, but I see no reason to not play it safe. And I'm going to Recycle here. Because, let's say Pelipper does go down there, then the game's 100% over it right at that point. Pelipper, however, does smartly protect. Now, the issue is, let's say Pelipper doesn't protect, and I Power Gem into Seeking. Then Seeking... Oh, I wonder if he's Water Z-move, actually. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, he's just going to throw a Waterfall my way, though. Actually, targeting down Snorlax. Okay. Interesting play. Uh, I actually like that because you know that Snorlax is a bigger threat. It's actually a life orb seeking. Huh. But now Garchomp kind of comes in. Yeah, so kind of describing that play. Let's say I power gem into Seeking, expecting Pelipper to protect and it doesn't. Then my opponent could actually pick up a double knockout potentially. That would be really bad because then I actually lose the game. So I don't want to throw the game and I don't want to be in a position where, you know, doing something like that could potentially be a throw. Um, however, I could protect my Nile Eagle this turn. I actually don't know my calcs against the Sea King, that's the thing. Um, because I want to protect. Is there really any reason to protect, though? Mm, nah. I mean, there is a reason to protect. I shouldn't say not, but... 
I'll just power gem and dragon claw. I actually should have reversed that because I could get a beast boost from power gemming into Pelipper. Let's see how much dragon claw does. Wait, sorry, yeah, wait, that was the order. Yeah. So let's see how much power gem does because he has to take life orb recoil as well, and I'm scarfed. Okay, yeah, that should be in KO range. Never mind, we're good. You're seeking with the waterfall though. <laughs> yep, targeting down now you go. That's gonna be a clean knockout. Um, but I play that exactly. I mean, that's how I wanted things to play out. Uh, the reason why I was like I ended up going for the power jump onto seeking was because I think that would that does more than a dragon claw from Garchomp with a life orb. So I'd rather get more damage onto Sea King because I don't know how much Dragon Claw does to Sea King, and I know that Pelipper is in KO range anyway. So I'll just Dragon Claw now safely into a Sea King spot, and that'll be a clean win. But oh uh, yeah, it was really cool to see Sea King here, and I just I, I can't believe it. We faced two rain teams both times. I was like, oh this is so bad, but Snorlax is such a good bait for the Z move, able to waste the Z move, able to hang out with Gyarados. Gyarados is able to one shot the Gold Duck after getting the Dragon Dance off. Just, just a testament to how powerful it is, and that's why I did want to run the Dragon Dance set. And we do end up picking up, it's three wins, even a fourth if you consider that DC. It really feels like two wins since that DC plus that uh, opponent who just forfeited immediately, but I'm obviously pretty content. I uh, do end up getting a good amount of points from that, and get some really quality games as well. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was definitely a lot of fun. It's not every day you get to see a Gyarados kind of trample over a rain team, and uh, two rain teams nonetheless. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, peace.